Hello, lovely people. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Station. I hope that you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's video is a browse through of the Berda August 2022 issue. But the first thing that I noted as soon as I received this issue and I opened it out of the plastic envelope that it comes into was it was a familiar face. And I instantly recalled that this is the same model from the April 2019 issue. And yeah, so I just thought that was quite nice. It kind of felt a little bit like, you know, when you've got a TV show that you enjoy and um, a character comes back or a recurring character comes back and it's a, I, I thought it was quite a nice feeling, but really vibrant, beautiful cover. And because we are in July right now, we have loads of beautiful flowers in the garden. I got you some of my favorites at the moment. So we've got these freesias over here, which is have the most divine fragrance. They make the most amazing cut flowers. And we've got some sweet peas as well. My sweet peas really did well this year and I'm so happy with them. Such beautiful colors growing up the obelisk. And the sense of these two flowers combined is just incredible. So wherever you are in the world today, I am sending you this bouquet of summer florals with just the most intoxicating scent on this wonderful sunny day. So we're going to uh, pop the flowers to the side over there so we've got the magazine and we have the line drawings ready to go so the big thing about this issue was the trench coat for me i sort of struggled to find anything else that really got me excited but i quite liked the trench coat um heads up straight away letting letting you know about that so the first thing that we had is this play on uh, paisley which apparently paisley is coming back and is trendy and we've got this lovely cute 70s style dress with the midriff section over here but we've added a pussy bow tie over at the top i'm not a big fan of this particular edition i personally prefer it just like this one of my favorite sewing patterns is the giselle maxi dress and it's got this similar v-neck attached onto a midi so in that regards for me this pattern is not necessary because I already have something similar that I have made seven times and will probably make more. But that was that one. And then over here, we've got an easy sewing pattern. And I do think that as you're heading towards summer, uh, social calendars seem to fill up a lot more. I think easy sewing patterns are definitely much appreciated uh, for those of us that have busy schedules, especially with children and all of that stuff. So this is a very, very, very simple top with the shearing at the sleeves over there. I am interested in trying shearing at the sleeves at one point, but we'll have to see. So, you know, I, I can see this one being popular because of its simplicity and you don't have to worry about fitting or anything like that. My only concern with it is the neckline to me looks like it is rather um, tight, rather quite narrow in the in sense of when you put it on. And I've had a couple of problems with a couple of these birded style tops that have this sort of a round neckline in that it's become a sort of top that I have to put on before I do my makeup and my hair because if I try and put the top on afterwards it just ruins everything because it's a little bit um, tight so anyway and then we've got a pair of trousers that I think this is the fourth time that these are rocking up now this sort of style that doesn't have the waistband and you've got the pleating so unlike in two issues ago I think we have the addition of some sort of a band, but it's not a waistband per se because it doesn't go at the back. But, you know, similar style tapering at the wrist over there. Hmm. So nothing new there, but it's been made in a paisley uh, fabric. And then we have a very simple A-line style skirt, which has got plenty of opportunities for some form of blocking. Because we've got princess in panels down there, and then we've got the center um, the center front and center back going down there with a zipper at the back and i believe that they made it in a faux leather and then this top here this entire outfit was very uh, 70s in style for me which i i quite liked i like the 70s i'm down with disco i love disco tunes and um those outfits but i gotta say i'm not a big fan of the zipper at the back and i can see how that does make a statement if you're just wearing this and you're sort of like creating that line of interest down the back but personally for me i i would i just i just wouldn't do that with a knitted fabric particularly an exposed zipper all of the extra steps that you have to take to try and make sure that this fabric doesn't stretch out to me is just a little bit icky but if you have time then you know it's an entirely different scenario okay so the other big 
pattern that I was very keen on when I saw the first looks and the technical drawings was these pair of wide leg jeans. And I think that between the trench coat and these jeans, that makes this issue uh, worth it if you're a big fan of wide leg jeans. Obviously, if you're not, then, you know, <laughs> go. But I love the design of these and I love how they have them here and even with the platform boots um, and whatever. And they're high-waisted, which is so super comfortable. So I thought that, yeah, and I can see these ones being quite popular. And then over here, we've got the boho style blouse number 113, which I think the last time I saw this particular style of blouse was in a 2020 issue. And I know because I actually traced out the pattern for this, except for it didn't have the little ties here, but it had the similar yoke. And oh no, I, can't, I can't remember whether it had the circular yoke or not, but it definitely had these uh, frontal yokes here. So I was like, okay. Reminder that I need to go and make that. And for some reason, the line drawing for this skirt didn't print out. So this is a maxi skirt and it is cut on the bias and it's got like a, a, a high waist over here. The print that they've used is really busy, very beautiful paisley print, but a lot of the detail is lost, but you can kind of get the boho theme that they're going for. And then we have a blazer, which of course blazers are staples and they do tend to pop up a lot. Almost every other birthday issue will have a blazer in it. But for some reason, the way that this was styled had me thinking, oh my gosh, I would love to make myself a blazer like this. Despite the fact that it is in brown, I can see myself wearing it like this in winter, um, sort of like in autumn, winter. Because uh, this issue has got me thinking about auto winter sewing um, already. But the styling with the boots and the dress, I would have tights, obviously. A scarf over there. And that I felt like that's, that would be a nice alternative to my puffer jacket that I tend to wear in winter. So I was quite surprised. Um, and I also love the large functional pockets because pockets are everything. But it's not on my to-sew list anytime uh, soon. Another feature that they started doing is some um, snippets of the wider bird sewing community. Probably they're getting them from Instagram. And you can see some of the styles. Uh, so I think this one is from May, the shirt dress from May, which I have traced out. And I would like to make that. Um, and that fabulous dress from 6 2021. And you kind of seeing them in the wild with, without the stylization of, you know, uh, a multi-million dollar company providing photographers and whatever. You're kind of getting a real good idea of what they actually look like and how gorgeous is that oddly enough i have this pattern traced out this is from 4 2015 yeah <laughs> and i was like oh i need to make that and i have made this dress actually this is dress for 2021 one so it's really nice it's actually really quite nice seeing this and i think i hope that they keep this up uh, going forward and then we have um ooh, the extended shirt with the tie on it I gotta say, classic shirts are classic. They work for a reason. I'm not necessarily, personally, a huge fan of doing this to it. But, I don't know, maybe some other bird or so we will sew this up and we can see that, you know, maybe um, I'm behind on the trends and realizing what works and what doesn't work. <laughs> and then we've got a, a t-shirt with some origami pleating detail here. Um, mm, again, the... I'm not too sure that I'm a big fan of this. Maybe it's because currently I'm going through a lot of um, appreciation of simple patterns and uh, simple uh, sewing stuff that allows the fabric to shine through. But <clears throat> when I see this, to me, this would work as a top t-shirt style top. But it's just got so much fuss. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and then we have a top here, which is a variation on a dress and the line drawing got lost somewhere. My printer ate it, uh, but it's a very simple one, very similar to, I think, something from March last year. There was a dress that was very similar and there was a top also very similar to it. And it's got the flounce, uh, flounce sleeve, but we'll talk more when we get to the dress for it. And then there was this really interesting blazer, again, with a pleated origami detail. And it looks really cool how they've done it with this uh, fabric that's got the circles. It gives it so much interest. But if you look a little bit closer, see if I can zoom in on it. Can you see here? I loved this little attention to detail where the double welt pocket, they've pattern matched it so that you've got the circles forming up. Now this tiny little detail really makes me feel like man this is really cool it inspires me to try and do something like this um, in my next project that requires um, double welt pockets and possibly a fabric like that but really nicely nicely tailored you know it's 
really beautiful um quite a small collar effect here now what i can't tell is obviously she's going to have something underneath so you'd have to wear this with like a camisole i don't think it would work particularly well with a shirt maybe a roll neck top but yeah curious to see what people are going to make of this i think that that's going to be interesting um to see and then over here we've got a very dramatic kind of skirt which gives you high contrast given the colors that they have used the black and the white i mean you could also make this monochrome by using like say maybe um a dark navy and a light blue color that could work or texture blocking where you use maybe a broderie on glaze over here and a cotton lawn or the other way um, around so but basically it's your simple a-line skirt and we've had this a couple of months before and then we've got this oversized jumper look but the difference is you see these little snags over here i think it's sort of like in a, um, the ed end of a zip <laughs> that's just been left out or a trim of some sort yeah um yeah it's always useful to have long cardies my go-to pattern for the long cardi is uh from birda 11 2020 i like that it's got giant pockets because for me it's missing the pockets and we've got something like this it's gotta have pockets you know and then we've got the dress from the beginning except for this time they have removed the um the tie blouse the tie that was integrated into the back and this I like. This I can get down with, but I would personally move the zipper to the back because I think dresses are so much better when you can step into them rather than when you sort of have to wiggle your way into them and then zip up down the side. But yeah, interesting choice of fabric as well. And again, this is another really good feature where you kind of get an idea of what something looks like in the wild. So you know, it's, they're not using, you know, a model or anything like that. It's uh, one of the workers in the office wearing it and how they've styled it. And I think that that looks gorgeous. Okay, so we've got sewing instructions for that dress over there. So, and then we had a history of uh, the trench coat thing, which was quite fascinating. I did not realize that this is uh, what Thomas Burberry of the famous Burberry uh, thing it looks like. And it's got a magnificent mustache to rival Poirot even. Uh, and of course, you've got Audrey, that, yeah, Audrey Hepburn in there. And, you know, she just epitomized the trench coat look. Really gorgeous. But I like this. I feel like this, um, what I like about this particular one, number one, there isn't a lot of top stitching with this particular one. So that's why it looks a lot cleaner. That's what I uh, saw. And I also like the fact that it's got this gun flap. I think that's what it's called, right? But most of the other trench coats that I've seen, this gun flap kind of goes up to here, but this one goes all the way down here. I don't know why I picked up on that. And that sort of made me think, oh, okay, that's an unusual uh, trench coat. Because for me, if I'm going to put in a lot of effort to make something as epic as a trench coat, I kind of wanted to have some little unusual details um, and things like that. And I quite like the use of D-rings um, over here as well to increase the tightness as and when you want more or less ventilation. So I think that that's a pretty good thing. Personally, I would prefer the D-rings to um, the things that you have the grommets in because I find those quite fiddly in the RTW um, trench coats that I have had. So, uh, yeah. So I'll add this to the list of trench coat sewing patterns that I'm considering for making a trench coat. Plus it's got like these really gigantic pockets, like incredibly gigantic pockets, which would make them very, very useful. Okay, and then we've got um, to counter that. Oh, sorry. So that was the line drawing for it. And then we've got this very smart, classic, classic wool overcoat and it's got the snap fasteners over there so that it just creates this elegant streamlined look really really gorgeous and then we've got that shirt again this time in a print and you can see how it's been tied there to give waist emphasis ah i just figured out what my biggest issue with this style of shirt is you're kind of stuck in how you wear it so first of all this would never work tucked in so if you're planning an outfit with it it would always need to be loose and untucked like this i it, i just don't see how it would work you tucking it in and then tying it up like that so you're restricted and then number two you always have to wear it tied here at the waist so you can't play around with doing that cute little thing of tucking it in at the front and leaving it out on the side um, yeah too restrictive is what I would say uh, for something, a shirt that is supposed to be, you know, full on um, open. So there's that dress again that we've seen in, I'm pretty sure, March 2021. Um, except for in the March 2021 issue, it had an elasticated waist rather than a drawstring waist here. And oh, gosh, 
I feel so ashamed. But I have traced it out. I pre I traced out the March 2021 20, uh, uh, dress that's like that and it's got a flounce uh, at the end of it. But I was just going to remove the flounces on here. I just, I, I don't like them. But yeah. And we've got that top again, but this time it's been made in a plain color. And this, let's see if we can zoom in. See, this for me is a problem. Can you see that? I feel like there's just too much stuff going on here with these pleats. And how do they iron? So I can tell that this is just after the garment has been sewn up, right? And it's creating all of these lines, which normally for me when I've got lines like this on my... Uh, garment i'm sort of like doing that thing of trying to pull it down to smoothen them out so i don't know i feel like this particular top doesn't work very well with this clean classic look that's going on everywhere else so it makes me feel like it's unnecessary and surplus to demand and then we've got a really cute no not quite cute classic another classic um sheath dress style which has an inbuilt necklace <laughs> so the neckline here if we can zoom in you can see that you you don't need to have the accessory of a necklace because it just does it with itself by the interesting way that the darts are done so yeah fascinating uh, and i think that if i still worked in an office or something like that i would definitely consider making this exactly in the grade that they have chosen i think that it is quite um, lovely and then we have a soft gamine style jacket here it's a little peplum jacket asymmetrical detail and the you know you have the option of not adding that flounce at the bottom am i using that line drawing i've got a line drawing right here so you have the option of not using this flounce here at the bottom beautiful cute little stand collar crisp shoulder detail so for any soft gamines out there this is a good jacket i've seen this before in a i think it's a 2015 issue yeah, a 2015 issue. And this has been made into the petite size, but the 2015 one isn't a petite side. And then we've got that extra long cardigan again. This time it doesn't have the trim or the zipper edge and it's shorter and with a tie. It's so much useful if it had pockets. Pockets, pockets are lovely. And then the tall pattern is a wrap dress with a faced buckle over here and some very fancy looking cuffs. That's nice. I like wrap dresses. Um, I have loads of wrap dresses in my collection. And we've got a sewing tutorial for this really complex looking origami uh, top if you are so interested. It's got like some weird stuff. I've tried this. I once made something from Berta January 2019 which had like an origami knot top. And um, needless to say, the experience was something that I have not ever since wanted to repeat. <laughs> so... And then we have uh, quite possibly what I think is the best boys, Berda boys uh, sewing uh, section because they have a cardigan, a really useful cardigan that could be made out of French terry or ponty or sweater print um, even. And you could use this in the school colors to make something that uh, your son could wear to go to school. And it's in the sizes that are actually suitable for my boys, it's 116 to 140. So I was like... Thumbs up. I like that. And then we've got some lovely plus size sportwear here. And they're going from sizes 44 to 52. And this is just, you know, like, um, uh, I want to say a sweater. Yeah. With a zipper and a convertible collar over here. Lovely welt pocket detail over there, though. Really fantastic stuff. Those things are so difficult to do. And then we have some culottes slash uh, skirty type thingy. Well, culottes are meant to look kind of like you're wearing a skirt sometimes when they're pleated but not quite so in with the spotty theme again and then a vest fantastic made in a uh, wool fabric here great i would definitely consider making this um with a vest or a gilet gilet fantastic and we've got oh sorry i just have to mention the flowers are just throwing out this really lovely lovely fragrance and i keep on catching it right now so yeah <laughs> anyway, and then we've got some really lovely sport slacks, which I quite like a lot better than the ones right at the beginning, because these ones look like they've got an elasticated waist and a hip yoke front, and they've got the ta tapering at the ankles. Fantastic. Make them in a ponty jersey. And I think you might even be able to get away with making these in a stretch sateen. You know, those sateens that have got some spandex in them and they've got like some stretch. They would look fabulous. We've got a hoodie top, a hoodie sports top in a really fabulous high contrast print that's like pow, pow, wow, wow, wow. 
we've got a very simple style top with a tie uh, detail do you know i actually have a silk top like this and it is quite nice although the one that i have has got buttons down the back so it's got like this huge statement buttons the Max and spencer's one but this little i thought that this would be fussy it's something that i got from a charity show by the way it's a silk um as well that's why i picked it up in, in my colors and this little tie this little asymmetrical tie at the side is just the cutest little thing so simple to add but it actually elevates an outfit so much so yeah good one uh, there and then we've got a little blazer here for the little chaps in the life and it's even got some armhole patches so cute so so cute um the cardigan has popped up again this time using some contrasting uh, colors has, so you've got the high contrast with the dark blue and then you've got the lighter blue here so yeah i like this this is something that i'm probably going to be making uh for my kids i'm doing a lot of stuff that is actually required i gotta say i'm not a big fan of the fabric that they have used here but it's um, those culottes again with the contoured waist and i think out of um all of this section this one was probably my favorite i really do like this dress i have a thing for shirt dresses but that have the relaxed feel to them so it's the combination of the you know the tailoring that you get from a shirt over there and this one has got some added piping details i'm not sure that i would personally add any piping details but you could easily go with a higher contrast fabric over here and the lower contrast one if you wanted to but this was probably my favorite out of all of them just by the line drawings alone and i think that it it's a lovely lovely dress and hopefully Berta will do something like this um, in the other sizes in in subsequent issues and then we've got this interesting looking coat dress and it feels like a coat dress because of the fabric that they've used they've used boucle which it reminds you know it's sort of like those Chanel jacket fabrics so it gives it a little bit of a coaty feel to it and it's such a formal thing but then they've thrown a bucket hat you know so I'm still making up my mind about this one but I thought that this one was really good so not much to say about this issue really um it, it's um you know just at at first glance it's a bit of a meh but upon further perusal you know definitely i think that the masterpiece uh, trench coat is yeah. is worth it say you're new to burden and you haven't collected any of the previous issues that do have some trench coats this would definitely make it um, worth it, as well as the fact that you've also got the option of the other classic style of coat, the uh, double-breasted uh, wool coat as well, included in one issue. I think that that's, um, that is pretty cool. I really like the boys section. I would definitely make every single one of those for my boys. I'm probably going to be making one three to the cardigan uh, for them. And I think that these wide leg trousers are going to be eternally popular uh, and quite a classic within the Berta community over the next few uh, years or so. So, yeah, that's it. But I'm not too bothered about the fact that it didn't have too many wow items for me because I'm still working on the retro dress from the previous issue. Finally decided the fabric that I was going to use and I had to order a contrasting fabric for the bands. So there we go. So that's the issue Berta 810... Uh, 8 2022 let me know in the comments below if you're going to be making anything from this issue and oh this is so lovely no, sorry. <laughs> and until i see you next time lovely people happy sewing and by the way do remember to like and subscribe it really does support the channel take care now bye